the, the blessing in COVID okay. is, the, the blessing in COVID okay. is, is that if you okay. still waking up every day, you you just ain't waking up no more. You, you like COVID for me, it's a trial. Oh, look at this. How many like COVID for me? Now, you want to know some bits of trial. I just know that I'm going to come out because of my track record. See, your track, all you got to do is your track record is 100%. Oh, look at this. How many of y'all just show me hands if you've had really bad days? Now, let me ask you something. How many of y'all had some days and you ain't think you was going to make it? Now, you want to know so we live? A lot of y'all been trying. Get, get get connected. Get spiritual. You can't go nowhere talk to God. What? Figure it out. Make something happen for yourself. That's what I did. Man, I had so much good stuff happen to me during the COVID. Got me some rest. Love you go nowhere. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know you but we live. A lot of y'all be tripping yourself out. Oh, it's the COVID. I can't I can't go outside. Can't nobody go outside. Y'all stay in the house, learn something. Get, get get connected. Get spiritual. You can't go nowhere talk to God. What? Figure it out. Make something happen for yourself. That's what I did. Man, I had so much good stuff happen to me during the COVID. Got me some rest. Lost me a little weight. Saved some money. Can't go nowhere. My wife quit shopping because she can't go nowhere. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It's absolutely necessary. And that's why I wrote the book. Because people only see the good part of you. It's like Instagram and Twitter. You never post a bad picture. <laughs> you know you pass up all them other pictures you get through all that. Yeah. Okay. Through all that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. But if who look good on camera and people who do amazing things only had amazing moments. And that's why we have so many haters. Because haters feel like it's not fair for you to have all the good times while I go through all the bad times. But the reality is we go through bad times, too. Come on. We go through heartache, too. Right. We go through disappointment. We feel bad. We get depressed. We want to give up. We want to walk away. But there's something down inside of you that keeps pushing you. I feel like I... Let's take a few minutes to talk about the importance of knowing yourself enough to be your best cheerleader. You know... When you thought you were doing what you were supposed to do and were misinformed? Who look good on camera. It's not fair for you to have all the good times while I go through all the bad times. But the reality is, we go through bad times too. Come on. We didn't seem to help. Appointment. We feel bad. We get depressed. We want to give up. We want to walk away. But there's something down inside of you that keeps pushing you. I feel... A few minutes to talk about the importance of knowing yourself enough to be your best cheerleader. You know, when you thought you were doing what you were supposed to do and were misinformed, the times you thought you had it all laid out and it just didn't work, didn't seem to help, it didn't seem to change the end result. These are the times that, and there are two ways to use self, learn from the fact that even though you're happen every, happen every so often, it's next time, acknowledge them, learn from them, remind yourself, Remind yourself that you're bound to get better. Not the last, not the last one, the next one. Oh, that you have learned from your mistakes. Oh, that you have learned from your mistakes. You can do it better next time. You just have to until, until. Heal this time was because you did. Heal this time was because you did. For messing up, for messing up. Pat yourself on the tip, tip. Tell you that you'll, tell you that you'll do better next time. You have to rely on yourself. You have to have faith in yourself and your ability to figure out what works and what doesn't. What's right and what's wrong. You have to have the inner belief that everything you're doing, you're doing for a doesn't. What's right and what's wrong. You have to have the inner belief that everything... You have to encourage yourself with future successes. Number one way to use self-encouragement, energies and study energies and study your mistakes with your with your goals your dreams your am do it until do it until when you miss an opportunity are unprepared for an opportunity or suffer a setback while realizing your goals when you miss out you need to encourage yourself by immediately getting back into line there's an old cowboy saying fall off a horse seven times and you're a real cowboy if you fall off a horse, get right back on. 
If you fall off track, get right back on. If you fall away from your disciplines, get right back to them. If you fall out of habit, get back into the habit. You need to encourage yourself by immediately getting back into line. There's an old fall off and you're a real cowboy. If you fall off a horse, get right back on. If you fall off track, get right back on. If you fall away from your disciplines, get right back to them. Fall off, it may be hard. It may be hard, it may be a bit frightening. But get back on. Keep all suffer one of two pains. The all suffer regret. Discipline regret. Discipline. I'm telling you better wish for less challenge. Wish for less challenge. Wish for more wisdom. Don't wish for it to change totally. Re totally rely on yourself. Doing something that you don't find shall your rel your rel as a drain you as a drain you What do you give it? under their name we could put on will you leave what will be different because under their name we could put on that has given us and how we live out will you leave before you turn it in that has given us and how we live out is when our batteries run low before you turn it in rut seem like nothing you is when times you act like you're rut seem like nothing you do works out right and sometimes it just seems like you just don't have the wherewithal or the will to do anything. That sometimes you act like you're punch drunk. You're just wading through life, just doing time, day in and day out, looking at non-discriminatory television, anything that's on, just looking. And depressed, feeling powerless, feeling useless, and bored. What do you do? How do you get yourself out of a rut? How do you, when you know you can do more than what you've been doing and you're not doing it and you're discontent with where you are, you get angry at yourself. How do you get out of that rut? How do you motivate yourself? One of the things that we must do is that we must be involved in working on achieving self-mastery. You must work on yourself continuously. Never be satisfied with yourself. Always know that as you invest the effort and time on you, that's the greatest ability that human beings have above animals. See, a dog can't be anything but a dog. Tree can't be anything but a tree. Human being, you've got unlimited potential. You can put effort on you, and by concentrating on you and developing you, you can transform your life wherever you are right now. So you want to work on yourself. You want to read books that inspire you and motivate you. You want to listen to tapes over and over and over again. And I suggest that you listen to tapes when you first get up in the morning. You want to control the spirit of your day. When you first wake up in the morning, your mind is operating at 10.5 wave cycles per second. That's when the subconscious mind is most impressionable. Whatever you hear in the first 20 minutes when you wake up, that will affect the spirit of your day. When you listen to tapes, listen with relaxed belief. Believing that this can happen for you. And by listening to them, listen to them over and over and over again. And you will get a breakthrough. You can listen to the same tape for months and all of a sudden you hear something you never heard before. It have a special meaning for you. Or read the same book over again and you find some special insight. You said, I can't believe I didn't see that the first time. So you want to be involved in developing yourself. Most people won't do that. Most people won't take that kind of effort and invest that kind of energy in themselves because they will fall prey to that conversation within. Oh, don't do that. You don't have time. You are too busy. You're too caught up in the rat race. Most people won't do that. Well, they won't take time to go to lectures. They won't take time to go to seminars. They won't take time to, to go to classes to improve themselves. And as you continue to work on yourself, you will begin to expand your vision of yourself. You begin to work towards self-mastery and you will begin to see it reflect itself in all the dimensions of your life, your mental life, your physical life, your social life, in your relationships, your monetary life. So concentrate on developing yourself. Final rule. It's called pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. And it's, it's a very, it's the most personal chapter in the book. It's a lot about my daughter. And my daughter was very ill when she was, well, when she was a kid, but particularly when she was a teenager, she had a very terrible time of it. 
Um, she had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and when she was between the ages of 14 and 16, it first destroyed her hip, which had to be replaced, and then... the ankle on her other leg which had to be replaced and she walked around for two years on broken legs and she was taking massive doses of opiates and could hardly stay awake and like and she had this advanced autoimmune disease which produced all sorts of other symptoms that were just as bad as the joint degeneration but which are harder to describe and so it's just bloody brutal you know and as a test of your faith there's almost nothing that's more direct than a serious illness inflicted upon an innocent child, right? And so the chapter is a meditation on that and also on well, what to do in a situation like that because everyone is going to have a situation like that in some sense, you know, because you'll be faced with illness in the people that you love and in crisis. And so it's a practical guide to coping with those sorts of things. Like in one of the things you do when you're overwhelmed by crisis is you shorten your time frame. You know, it's like you can't think about next month. Maybe you can't even bloody well think about next week, or maybe not even tomorrow, you know, because now is just so overwhelming that that's all there is. It's like, and that's what you do. You cut your time frame back until you can cope with it. And if it's not the next week that you see how to get through, then it's the next week. day and if it's not the next day then it's the next hour and if it's not the next hour then it's the next minute and you know people are very 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 tough and it turns out that if you face things that you can put up with a lot more than you think you can put up with and you can do it without becoming corrupted and she did recover quite quite fully and much as a consequence of her own machinations because she figured out what was wrong with her and then took the necessary steps to fix it, which is nothing short of a bloody miracle as far as I'm concerned. And uh, 
Anyway, as part of the cat bit, is I actually start by talking about our dog, who actually died about a year ago, but he's still alive in the book. You know, I let people know, because dog lovers love dogs, and if you love cats, then they think you don't like dogs, and then they, you don't, they don't like you. So I... Also point out at the beginning of the chapter that you know if you want to pet a dog on the street that's okay too so you don't have to get up in arms about it but but the idea is that you know you have to be alert when you're suffering you have to be alert to the beauty in life the unexpected beauty in life and that's kind of what I was trying to get across with the idea of the cat there's this cat that lives across the street from us called ginger and ginger's a Siamese cat and cats really aren't domesticated eh? technically speaking they're still wild animals but they kind of like people God only knows why, but they do, you know. And so Ginger will come wandering over, and our dog looks at her, but they're friends, and she rolls over on his back, and Seiko used to, you know, nose her a bit. And, and then she'd kind of mosey over and let you pet her if she was feeling like it that day. And, you know, you have to look for those, that little bit of sparkling crystal. <laughs> in the darkness when things are bad. You have to look and see where things are still beautiful and where there's still something that's sustaining. You know, you narrow your time frame and you be grateful for what you have and that can get you through some very dark times. And maybe even successfully if you're lucky, but even if unsuccessfully, then maybe it's only tragic and not absolute hell. And you can do that, you know, in the worst situation, you can make it only tragic and not hell. And there's a big gap between tragedy and hell, you know. There's nothing worse at a deathbed than to see the people there fighting. The death is bad enough, but you can take that, as terrible as it is, and make it into something that's absolutely unbearable. And maybe I think, and this is sort of what I close the book with, is this idea is that if we didn't all attempt to make terrible things even worse than they are, then maybe we could tolerate the terrible things that we have to put up with in order to exist. And maybe we could make the world into a better place, you know? And it's what we should be doing and what we could be doing because we don't have anything better to do. And that's what the book is about. And that's the end of 12 Rules for Life. Yeah.